All right, we are going live. Good evening, everybody. How are you this evening? Hello, Hello. Gun Nation. <laughs> Uh, another exciting uh, weekly chat. Um, I see some people uh, joining us already. And uh, of course, uh, Craig Fatla has been uh, there since the beginning. We should have started a few minutes ago, but uh, Craig, appreciate you. Uh, Pistol Pete, Insight Freedom. See both of you. Here we go. I'm kind of scrolling down the list here. Scotsman is here, Young Guns. Uh, Matt, good to see you. Gerald, good to see you. Sean, what's going on? Captain Sharp, Anthony, people are just kind of piling in. Abaddon, great to see you. Uh, Philip Harper, good to see you as well. And I'm sure people will continue to be rolling in. How's everybody doing tonight? Peachy. Lovely. I see uh, Lock and Load Lifestyle. Man, Nolan, it's going to take me a while to get used to that name. Um, I like it a lot. I'm so used to Nolan's mindset. So I um, hope that name is uh, working out for you. Uh, great time last night on the chat. You did a great job, as always. Uh, appreciate you for that, of course. PGH, good to see you. Wicked, always a pleasure, my friend. Um, yeah, so uh, another great evening. Uh, we've got a couple of brief topics uh, we thought we would bring up to you guys or at least kind of give some updates on. Uh, and then I think we'll probably just kind of open it up and see where the wind takes us, so to speak. So uh, either of you guys want to uh, go first, say anything at all? Uh, I couldn't rent a uh, truck at uh, Home Depot today. <laughs> I'm joking. That's ridiculous, man. I don't know if y'all uh, if y'all watched any of the the CNN media at first, they actually were coming out and saying that it was a shooting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. Too. Yeah, they were, oh, it's a shooting, it's a shooting. It's like, what? You know, yeah. don't report till you know what the hell's going on. And, and the uh, I saw the one uh, announcer or anchor or whatever, and the only reason I was watching CNN is somebody told me to watch it because of that reason. But uh, they were asking these people like, oh my gosh, did you see the shooter? And they were like, it was a truck, it wasn't a gun. So, I thought that was pretty crazy, but you, we all know how that crap goes. Yeah. Uh, well, being from New York, um, I think one of the biggest things was, uh, you know, when it first was released, you know, it came out as, uh, up here at least, I don't know about you guys, but up here it came out as, um, you know, truck or van or truck. It came out initially saying it ran over a bunch of people, you know, and where it was located. And I was like, oh, I, I know where that is. I've been there. And uh, right away I, I was like, this is not accidental because, Nobody, nobody drives a truck on that little bike path, if you can even call it a bike path. And so um, it was definitely an act of an intentional harm on people. So, of course, right away, immediately, everybody starts remembering 9-11 and saying, oh, my God, here we go. Obviously, not to the extent. Yeah. You know, then they released a video of the guy running out of his truck after he finally stopped because I guess he hit a bus. And uh, he's running around with these two what appeared to be firearms in his hands which turned out to be, um, I think one was a, a, a BB gun and the other one was some sort of paintball gun. Paintball gun, yeah. Um, so he obviously was not really armed with anything, but you know, he finally got shot by one police officer. And uh, the thing I said to my wife when I saw it happening and they showed the video of this guy running out, if I would have had my gun at that particular moment, I would have pulled my gun, I would have shot that guy dead in the damn street. Um, yeah. Uh-oh. Did we lose uh -oh. sound? Yeah, I'm not hearing him. Yeah, I think I think we lost your sound, buddy. <laughs> um, well, he works through his technical uh, difficulties. Uh, yeah, um, I actually I caught some of that uh, CNN. I don't remember. Um, I don't watch CNN, but uh, I think somebody else was sharing the video. In fact, it might have been it might have been Yankee Marshall actually uh, who put something up there, and and uh, it caught my attention. So I watched a few moments of that, and and you know I. I yeah, I kind of I kind of blame CNN for jumping on the uh, on the gun, so to speak, uh, for this, and and I think part of it's because of the the wake of Las Vegas, and it's kind of fresh on everybody's mind, and um, and certain media outlets more than others perhaps are a little bit more um, easy to pull the trigger uh, to uh, to call attention to guns, and in this case, it, it didn't happen to be a tragedy, nonetheless, regardless of what it was, but uh, but uh, you know at least. It, at least from a from a Second Amendment standpoint, from a gun standpoint, um, you know, we we didn't have to worry about you know uh, getting our our hairs up, so to speak, for that particular incident. Do I have sound? Uh, you've got you sound. Okay. Welcome back. Yay! Um, so anyway, I, just to finally say what I was going to finish saying was, you know, it just is ridiculous that these gun laws are this ridiculous up here, and it just goes to show once again that if you disarm people. 
it's just um it's just an act you know just an act of terror killing murder whatever waiting to happen you know new york city nobody's armed except for the police for the most part and uh you know to not have the ability to stop the threat immediately you know it took one cop to do that uh himself but i mean it's just um you know i, I don't want to politicize the gun issue but for god's sakes i mean what you know how, how do you have people protect themselves in a busy city like new york city you have you know a couple hundred thousand police officers and yet you still had eight people killed you know and they prepare they're they're very prepared in the city for these types of things but you know how do you stop this like seriously if you, if you don't arm the population yeah well like i you know my little saying that i always say you know you're just inviting the uh the wolves to the hen house you know um anytime you advertise we don't have guns or you know it's a soft area all you're doing is just saying hey come on do what you want to do and what really blew me away is you know on that bike path and we have some of those in our area now we've got them along the highway where there's no protection but you know the concrete pillars or the poles that they actually put in the ground we've got a lot of those on our bike paths where like a truck couldn't come through there you know only bikes can pass through there because they're very narrow and i'm really surprised they didn't have that there i would imagine that would be a lot of infrastructure work especially on smaller streets but uh, but i don't know for sure you just drill a hole and pop some poles in there yeah. you know that's how that's how, that's how the rednecks do it but you know that's we get it done but I, I don't know i just you know that's a pretty wide path and um you know, hell, even in London and stuff, when I was over there, they had some of those areas with the protection poles where vehicles could drive up through there. Right, right. So, and I'm sure they'll probably do that now. Yeah, I imagine they will probably uh, be reevaluating and and trying to consider some different options. So, uh, we'll we'll have to kind of see how things go over the next coming weeks and months. Yeah. So, uh, seventeen can can kind of keep us posted on that. Sure. Yes. So uh, on to the next uh, topic, uh, another thing that's been kind of on the forefront, at least from a YouTube gun channel perspective, uh, has been uh, the, um, uh, and, and I'm, I'm going to say this kind of kind of loosely a little bit, the demonetization of, uh, of certain channels. And, and I no longer can really say of gun channels specifically, although we have definitely seen a lot of that in our community. Um, I, I think... Um, in, in learning and reading some uh, some articles that uh, that that are from bloggers and, and video creators, content creators that uh, fall dramatically outside the the realm of uh, gun channels, um, a lot of people have been affected by this. And um, I, I learned, and we talked a little bit about this last night on Nolan's chat, uh, that uh, uh, YouTube did an update over the weekend to hopefully help. Um, kind of pull some of that back, some of the algorithm changes that they've been making over the last, I don't know, three, four, five months, maybe since April or so. And uh, and and I know different channels have seen different effects uh, because of this. I know the the three of us here on the on the chat tonight have talked at length about how it's affected us personally on our cha on our uh, channels, uh, whether more or less. And then how it's affected other channels as well. I mean, we know that uh, uh, Mac and Such and I believe um, uh, Mr. Guns and Gear, I mean, I, I think they've received some strikes, uh, which is definitely a big deal. I think it's three strikes and you're out. But uh, leading up to that point, each strike comes with different uh, penalties or consequences. Your channel gets kind of frozen to some degree uh, prior to the next uh, strike. So it'll be interesting to see how this uh, irons out. What, what are you guys finding as of right now with your channels? Uh, you mind if I go, Big Johnson? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, for me, it, it's kind of interesting because when I released the YouTube can go suck it, um, it was briefly demonetized and then monetized back up again, and it has stayed that way. And then I released the Walter PPQ video, and that has been monetized for two days straight. But when I go back to the older ones that were, you know, demonetized, they're still demonetized. And, we're, you know, so I have no idea what the heck's going on with that. Um, they may have fixed this quote unquote magical algorithm, but I don't buy it. I don't buy it one doubt. But, and, but I will tell you what I thought was interesting is I was looking at some of the channels yesterday and uh, I came up to Yankee Marshall's channel. And I clicked on his video that he posted and I forget what, what, what it was, but the ad before his video was the ad where the, all the celebrities are, you know, telling you to vote against the Share Act and all this other stuff. And I'm saying, how how could they put that in front of his video? That's YouTube. That doesn't even make sense either. So you have an anti-gun commercial for a, 
a supposed gun channel and then um, they play it and I'm just sitting here saying to myself so he's not getting demonetized but they're putting anti-gun rhetoric before his videos I, I don't understand it well John Lovell you know the poet he's same same scenario he just about on every one of his videos he has that share stupid thing and you know he's one of the big gun guys so it's like what the heck's going on but you know whatever let them blow money on it and then lose money on it but you know that's that's the liberals they're going to do what they want to do we don't have any control over it but yeah i mean i've been popped i still have videos that won't be monetized but frankly and i'm just being honest i really don't give a shit because i'm tired of it <laughs> yeah so, i don't care anymore either. Whatever. whatever i mean you know i'm not in it for the money trust me i'm not making any money you know it's just pennies so you know i'm just doing it for fun and uh you know to interact with other people of the same mindset and that's what i'm doing be nice if they would be monetized but you know they're going to do what they're going to do they have the control we don't so you know we'll just uh we'll just go with it and see what happens if they decide to shut it down we'll go elsewhere so that's kind of yeah. how i'm looking at it right yeah and there, yeah, well, there are some options out there there are some options so yeah hey real quick um let's kind of jump yeah i'll, I'll I'm in a hotel, so I don't oh, know. Look at that, part. dude. You got your first, uh, whatever they call those. Range. Super chat. What? I think he was supposed to do that on mine. Dang. <laughs> look at that. All right. So so here's what I'm going to do with uh, Range's money. And thank you very much. That's awesome. Everybody shoot me your addresses. I'm going to send each of you a bottle of beer, and we are all going to split a beer together. How about that? Sure. I'll just take the three dollars and thirty-three cents. How's that? Oh, this is for everybody in the chat. Oh, okay. I'm to be very creative in how I split apart the uh, the beer, but everybody everybody gets a taste. So, uh, Rain, thank you very much. That's that's freaking awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, I was gonna say I've never seen that before on our chat, so that's really awesome. Oh, you know, um, KS, KS is more special than we are. You know that. I know. He's the, he's the I suffer from the DTs apparently. So <laughs> he's the chosen. Oh, yeah, right. Right. But hey, you know, and, and a lot of people have been asking me about this. I don't know if y'all have or anybody's brought it up to y'all. Uh, as far as, you know, November 4th, you know, all this Antifa stuff and everybody's like, what are you going to strap on? What are you going to wear? What's, you know, all that's been brought up. Uh -oh. Are y'all going to dress any differently? Uh, I plan on wearing a tutu. No, I mean, are you going to carry a different gun? Or are you oh, going to carry? I think, I think KS is frozen now. Oh hell! Oh boy, boy, maybe maybe we are we have been targeted by YouTube. <laughs> maybe. All right. Okay, so, so KS, are, we're going to go on with this chat anyway. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he can jump back I mean, in. Am or, I going to dress any differently? Uh, no, I mean, I'll, I'll have a gun with me, but no, I meant are you go not? It's not dressing. It's are you going to like carry extra mags, two or three um, guns? I'll carry an extra gun. I'll, I'll probably carry an extra gun just in case, but I, I don't see anything happening around my area up here. You know, you'll probably see those protests more in the larger city areas, uh, especially New York city. Um, but honestly, you know, for whatever reason, I don't see much of that Antifa crap up here in New York. I know that sounds crazy, but we just don't see a lot of that here. I think that's more in like, you know, uh, California, obviously, um, maybe the West coast, maybe some places down South, uh, I don't see it happening much in the Midwest, and I don't see it happening up here in New York. Uh, you know, sometimes you have some demonstrations, but they don't get like uh, what I've seen on, uh, you know, on the news and stuff with Antifa. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't really think it's gonna. Uh oh. No, he's. I just texted him. He's gonna jump back in or try right. to log back on. How can um, how can we be running this chat without him? No, you've got like ten minutes, and then it shuts it down. Oh, or nine minutes. That's so that gonna, Google Fiber that he's been touting. You know, as far as, you know, what I've planned to do is carry, you know, a full size gun on my right. And then I'm going to carry the shield on my mm -hmm. left holster. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I don't think it's, you know, in my area, I don't think it's going to get too out of control. I've mm -hmm. heard that there's going to be some kind of stuff going on in Austin. But, you know, Austin's kind of turned a little liberal right, right. Uh, with that. But it, I think you're right. I think you he's asking if I can invite him. He He's the moderator. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's got to come back in. Um, oh boy, this might be uh, different. But yeah, the uh, I, you know I don't think it's gonna I don't think it's gonna affect us. I'm interested to see what's gonna happen in other areas. I don't know if anything's gonna happen. Uh, right. If it's gonna be shut down rather quickly. 
Well, um, I don't know what's going to happen. Honestly, I'm not caring too much about it. I, I don't really feel threatened by, you know, a bunch of, you know, teenagers and college kids and, and millennials who, you know, can't shave, can't take a shower and cry about everything. You know, to me, that's not tough. You know, and they, they go on about, you know, this, this and that about, oh, we have this gun and that gun. Great. I mean, whatever, you know, um, I, I don't see too much about it. So yeah. I, I'm not going to worry. So, hey, uh, KS, can you hear us? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Good, yeah, good, yeah, yeah. Good. Sorry about yeah, that, that, guys. That Google yeah. Fiber should, uh, you know, return some of your money. I I'm telling you, I'm going to call him right after this. <laughs> yeah. One thing that they're going to do is they're going to, uh, you know, I have sent out an invite for them all to come to my house and mow my yard and wash my truck. And then when they're done, I'll call their mom to pick them up. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I think if anybody feels threatened by it, you know what? Good luck. Good luck, Antifa, if that's what you want to do. You know, um, I don't feel threatened in the least bit <laughs> at all. At all. Um, actually, G-Man is reporting, and he's a very viable source. It says there are several credible threats made in Texas. Uh, but the forecast time frame is the fourth till sometime in this de in December. Huh. And he's so, a very credible, he's a very credible source. So well, I'm I assuming that since his name is G man. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I personally know him. So yeah, he's definitely a credible or he's very a credible person. So who knows? I mean, we're just going to have to, we're just going to have to, you know, see. And, and like I said, I know that I'll be taken care of and my family will, um, you know, I, I definitely, like I always say, everyone carry on because you never know what the hell's going to happen. And if anybody gets in front of my truck, they will be mowed down. You're I'm gonna not going to stand. I'm You're going to be stand. on CNN. Do what? You're going to be on CNN then. Yeah, well, right. then they're, then you're, they're going to have it on film of all those idiots standing in front of my truck. So, you know, we need more speed bumps, apparently. <laughs> right. So. Okay, uh, real quickly, uh, totally changing the subject. Uh, Sean is asking for opinions on carrying a Glock uh, 19 sized pistol at uh, four o'clock in something like a, a better light tuck or similar holster. What are your thoughts on that? I carry Glock 19 size pistols, not a Glock 19, but Glock 19 and bigger at four o'clock all the time. So uh, that's, yeah, I mean, that's my preferred four to four thirty. You just got to have a good amount of camp, you know? That's yeah. it. I mean, I, I'm, you know, it's weird. Lately, I've been carrying around like 3, 15, 30 ish around there. It's just at four o'clock, I feel like it's too far back. Um, so I've been co covering a little bit closer to my hip bone, which is kind of interesting because I've never carried like that before, but I'm finding it that it's actually more comfortable. Yeah. Um, and I'm noticing that I'm able to get the gun a little bit better purchase on it and just reach it better. You know, I don't know if it's because of my, my arm or what, but, uh, I just know it's like for me right now, about 3.30 is my max, and I'm able to draw quick and get it up to eye level pretty fast. So I just I figure I'll just keep carrying that. Um, but, but yeah, I don't, see, I don't see why you couldn't carry that. I mean, shit, you could carry you can carry a full size gun at four o'clock. You know, get the right holster, get the right belt, and dress with the right shirt, and you'll be good to go. Yeah, I mean, I uh, carry uh, I carry uh, you know a PO9 at the 4.30, and uh, it's all about the cant. You're exactly right. You know, if it's in a neutral cant, that's mm -hmm. designed for 3 o'clock or appendix, but the more you tilt it, you know, and your belt's running here, the more tilt you get out of it, the more you're able to reach it. Plus, you know, I have big old long arms, but um, I just find, you know, I, the gun's back there. I don't take it out when I drive. It's right back there, and I lean on it. doesn't bother me at all. It's You know, but I've been carrying like that for years and years and years, and it's all about getting your body accustomed having something feel different uh back there and then you know you'll just kind of you know the more you do it the more you'll be surprised that it doesn't hurt or you know anything like that no we're not talking about that 17. um <laughs> so, i know where so you're I, going uh, i look at wicked uh, wicked comments so i'm just saying i'm just typing something back to him uh-huh um, so, so you guys know that, uh, I typically have carried something, uh, like usually a single stack firearm, but uh, lately I've been carrying the, uh, the Smith and Wesson MP 2.0 compact. So very Glock size. Holy shit. Hang on. Hang on. We need to, we need to bow to this. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I've been carrying that in, in uh, Harry's holster. Um, and you guys may have seen that on the video yep. and uh, it is surprisingly comfortable. Now you talk, uh, big Johnson a little bit about can't. 
And, and that makes a lot of sense, although I find actually having not a lot of camp, but a, a fair amount of camp even at a three o'clock because that helps it helps hide uh, the uh, the grip of the gun a little bit. Um, it brings yep. it up uh, a little bit more so it's more symmetrical with your body. So from a printing standpoint, um, it's not really very much of an issue at all. Uh, now, I'm, I typically will wear a cover garment with something like that, especially as I'm getting used to it, although I'd like to try it in the summer with just a t-shirt as well. But I will also report that the uh, 2.0 Compact, um, even against the skin, is perfectly fine. I've had no issues, and I've had some people comment that uh, that over time it'll rub the crap out of you and uh, leave a pretty good, uh, almost rash. But uh, but so far it's been fine. Yeah, the stippling, you know, and it all goes. We've even talked about this many, many times. It all goes back to a good holster, you know, Harry's holster, whatever it is, a good holster and a good gun belt. You know, if, if you're wearing like a little Walmart dress belt, your you know your holster is going to move all over the place. So. If you just have the right gear and you anchor it to your body, it's not going to move. It stays in the same spots. You know, and I have these super, super aggressive lock grips. I mean, they're super aggressive and I don't have like a big road rash or anything crazy. You know, it just, you know, sits there. So that's what it does. Right. Yeah. And Harry makes a good, Harry makes a good point. Um, everybody's body is a little bit different. Uh, so if you carry it a, a four ish, um, adjusting it to your body is key. And, and I think that's exactly right. I mean, you know, play, play around with different positions and different cans, uh, maybe even try a couple of different holsters to, to see what just is most comfortable for you. Yeah. And I mean, hell like his, you can adjust it 9 million different ways. So if you can't adjust that holster the way you want it, you know, I don't, I don't know what you're going to, you know, duct tape it to you or something because you can adjust his big time. Um, did y'all happen to, and I know, you know, not getting off the subject, but did y'all happen to, um, watch Jeremy's videos on the Hudson and stuff like that? Nope. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's teasing us. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I actually put my hands on one and I went into the store. They had one, but, uh, I saw this guy looking at it and he was, you know, they're showing it to him and everything. And I was looking over there and I was like, oh shit, that's a Hudson. And um, then he started looking at ARs and it was laying on the counter. And I told my little sales guy that was helping me, I said, man, go over there and grab that Hudson. I want to check it out. So he just walks over and grabs it and opens it up. And I start finger banging it. And the guy's like, well, that's mine. That's mine. I already bought it. I'm like, no, okay. Okay. You know? And so I checked the trigger and ran the slide and hit the reset. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's pretty nice. So uh, the trigger is very, very surprising. It's super light. Reset's nice. Um, I think it's going to be a nice pistol, you know. But, of course, I didn't shoot it. But, um, yeah, that guy bought that, and he bought two other high-end ARs, and his bill was six grand and some change. But, okay, it must be nice. I don't know. I'm not interested. $1,200, no thanks. Yeah. I am interested and I cannot wait for the damn thing. I just talked to Center Fire Shooting Sports the other day and they they uh, don't necessarily have faith that they're going to see it until close to the end of the year. But uh, and, and that, that may be the case because I did, they're releasing them in, in relatively small batches. And uh, from what I understand, the first batch, a lot of them went to very specific people. Um, some of which are reviewers uh, and uh, public publication journalists, that sort of thing. And then some are sort of buddy buddy with certain people to be able to get gun, guns faster than little people like me. Uh, so um, I, I'll wait. That's okay. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I think it's going to be I think a really cool gun and I'm looking forward to something different. Um, yeah. I, I'm really kind of craving something uh, different than, you know, the, a lot of the guns that, that all of us are very familiar with and, and have tested and reviewed ad nauseum. Yeah. And wicked, wicked sand that the Hudson didn't do well in the four element test. Well, actually Jeremy forgot the sand or excuse me, he forgot the mud or the dirt. He had the sand and the mud. Uh, so he did forget the dirt, but you know, I mean, for what that pistol is, I guarantee you take pretty much any true 1911, you know, and I know this is a 1911 ish striker fire, but, you run a 1911 through that test with those tolerances, it's going to do the same thing. You know, it's going to lock up too. 
I maintain that almost any gun is going to do that. Uh, those those elemental type tests are, are a lot of fun to watch. I watch yeah. all of them. I think they're entertaining and fascinating. And, and it's, you know, you kind of want to root for uh, the guns that you really like, of course. And, uh, and But at the end of the day, I mean, those really are torture tests. And they are torture tests for a reason. And when you have a, a sample of one uh, going through those sorts of things, I mean, you know, uh, most of those guns are bound to fail. And it just, you know, it's it's all entertainment. It's all for fun. Yeah, and Wicked's saying, you know, he's telling me for $1,000, you know, or plus, it better work. Well, that's like if, you know, you took a competition pistol. I've never done it. You know, took a Shadow 2 or took something else and drug it through those elements. I don't know if it'd work, but that's not what it's designed for either. But I know this is a concealed carry pistol, you know, for the Hudson. But, um, you know, I don't know if a person who carries a Hudson is going to be rolling around in the mud and doing all that kind of stuff. So, you know. It is what it is. We'll just have to see. So, uh, Agreed. yeah, and Pistol Pete saying the PO7 and PPQ did well. And actually, the PO7, if Mac would have not forgotten that it was striker fire, or excuse me, that it was uh, single action, double action, he could have pulled the trigger again and it probably would have went off. 17? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to say. I, I have absolutely zero interest in that gun. Zero. I, it's nice looking, sure. I'll let one of you guys pay twelve hundred bucks for it and then tell me how it is. I have no interest in it. I mean, I'd, I'd rather get like uh, you know three Glocks with that. That's fair. That's fair. Well, Glock uh, in Glock having that special where you buy one you get two free. Yeah, that's new. Yeah. I mean, for that seriously though, for that price. Um, for twelve hundred bucks, you know, because I qualify for the blue label on the Glock, um, I could pick up literally four brand new Glock Gen Fives for that. Yeah. So. No, I know. No, no desire for it. Sorry, guys. Hey, it's all good. Everybody has different tastes, and that's uh, oh, yeah. all this exciting. So. Yes, sir. Uh, Harry is saying that uh, most of the guns Mac threw uh, through the test uh, didn't do so well or don't do so well. Uh, the results tend to be surprising. I would totally agree with that. Um, and, and Pistol Pete saying that the P07 and the PPQ did well. P07, I think, largely because those rails are inside. I mean, I, I think the P07 and a lot of CZs have a dramatic advantage because of that. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm sure it does. You know, uh, like the A-Rex, you know, I own the A-Rex, and that's the one that flew through it. Um, you know, and I'm thinking A-Rex, okay, I don't know if he's ever done a SIG 226. You know, that's very similar to the A-Rex, uh, or that's what the A-Rex is built off of. Just wondering if the SIG 226 would do the same thing, if it would fly right through it. You know, I think it has a lot to do with uh, double action, single action also. But it could also be luck. You know, it could also be yeah. that day the gun worked or that day the gun didn't work. Uh, you know, it's it's there's so many variables. I mean, you can't just say that this test is – going to be standard for every single thing you know you can pick up some sand or some dirt that has more you know more whatever more crap in it than the other day next time you got a failure i don't know yeah and you're right and also the consistency of the sand or the mud or that day could could vary the test too um let's see here Oh, KS, you have a question from Blazon. <laughs> KS, what kind of jock strap for PPQ, VP9, and P10C? Really, really big. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> He's got a lot of space in there. Oh, that's Huge. awesome. Huge. I like that. Yeah, I think the A-Rex uh, Tactical would be pretty cool. I haven't shot one. I think it'd be pretty cool, though. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, You're talking about the, the SIG P226. That's a great gun. Uh, the in the A-Rex uh, in Big Johnson, I, I mean, I've shot yours. That's the only experience I have with it. It was a great gun as well. I like that style of firearm. Yeah. Well, and I mean, the, the good thing about the A-Rex, the mags are only 25 bucks. I mean, so, you know, 17 round mag for $25. And, but I loaded up on them because I was afraid when they first came out that all of a sudden everybody was going to buy the mags and they were going to go sky high, but they didn't. So. <laughs> oh, backstrap. So, backstrap. Backstrap. I mean, you know, but but large large jock strap just the same. <laughs> um, now, now Blazon, are you asking what size backstrap I use for, for yes. those sense for me the, personally? Uh, um, so what do we say? The P10 was a medium, the VP9 was uh was actually a medium, and I think what was the other one? PPQ? 
Yeah, that was small. Yeah, PPQ. PPQ. Uh, yeah, um, all of those would have been uh, a medium uh, back strap. That that is almost always the 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 route that I take with with compact and and full size firearms. Hmm, that's interesting. That's why I like uh, that's why I like KS because I usually get all of his large extra colors. So, but uh, let's see here. Uh, anybody have any experience with pro mags for M and P's? No, nope. uh, no, not M and P's, but yes, Glocks. Um, and I've had good luck with them uh, with Glocks. I know that uh, they they had a, a first generation pro mag that uh, that did not do quite so well, but uh, uh, the newer version or newer generation, whatever, uh, those do just fine. I would imagine it's probably the same for the M and P. I had the older versions for the M and P, and they were trash. Now, I have not tried any of the newer ones, so I really don't know, to be quite honest. Do you guys think you're getting that much more savings by buying Pro Mags as opposed to just staying with the manufacturing no. magazines? A lot of people use them for range use, you know, so they can just have a lot. I don't think a lot of people, I would never recommend carrying one right. uh, in your pistol, but I think a lot of people just buy them, you know, so they right. have more what I'm saying, though, is if, you know, is the price difference that amazingly big? Whether it's for range or carry, who cares? But wh why would you not just spend a couple extra bucks and buy the manufacturer's magazines? Because it can't be that much of a difference price-wise. Uh, some of them are only like 14, 15 bucks, and where the factory ones sometimes are 30. I don't know. I mean, you know, the only magazine that I will, I will buy that is not manufactured by, like, let's say, a company would be Mechar. Mechar mags are the only ones I would buy. Oh yeah, well hell, they make them for all the companies. That's what I'm saying. So there's yeah. like generic brand magazines. Cut out the, yeah, yeah, cut out the middle man. Manufacturers magazines. Yeah, cut out the middle man. You know, I I think there are some manufacturers depending on the gun, and I would use Glock as an example, like a Glock 19. Uh, there there are several different choices out there. Some are pretty good, like the e I think it's ETS yeah. magazines. Um, I've had very good luck with those. I've never had a single fail uh, failure in any of those, and I, I think I have three or four. Uh, but I, I completely agree, uh, 17, with uh, what you're saying, especially with, with carry or whatever. I would much prefer uh, the uh, the stock uh, manufacturer magazine uh, with the firearm. I mean, something that's tried and true, but, but for range use, whatever, if you want to have a couple magazines to throw in your bag and kind of run with, I, I think uh, aftermarket magazines are just fine, but uh, a lot of people are saying that the, the the pro mags don't do necessarily very well. So, uh, yeah, and um, I had talked to Harry today, you know, from Harry Harrison from Harry's Holster, and uh, yeah, he sent me a deal, and they're running that Remington, uh, what is that Remington R1, that full size gun? After rebate, it's 169 bucks. Yeah, did you um, see my uh, response on that? No. What'd you say? Um, you know that that's a that's a killer price, uh, without question. I will be really honest with you. Uh, hopefully, nobody will hate me for this. I don't have any interest in in Remingtons. Yeah, neither. I, I just don't. And I even really? got an email tonight for the Pico. You know the Beretta Pico. After their fifty dollar rebate, I think it's one hundred and sixty nine bucks too. And I, I, you know, I know that the earlier ones had problems, but. Uh, let's see what's going on out here. Uh, Lyle asked a question about uh, the 2.0 uh, on skin and clothes, uh, and I, I mentioned this a little, a little bit earlier. Um, so far, I, I haven't had an issue uh, whatsoever. I, I think some more long-term testing will probably be needed, but uh, but but so far it's worked just fine. Hasn't been a problem. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I didn't think that there would be any issue on that particular pistol, you know, because it's. It's kind of just the same stuff that they've moved over to, you know, just shortened to 2.0 full size. But to have a whole different evolution of gun or a whole brand new, you know, striker or something that's come into the market, you know, those are going to have some growing pains. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. What, um, so, Tim, what are you playing with? Oh, uh, the Steyr. So, well, let's do a gun check. What do you got there? Uh, well, I got three on the table. I just have my Glock, my CZ P10, and my Steyr. But I carried I carried the P10 for a little bit tonight. 
I figured, what the hell, you know? But, uh, but you, you know. What do you got, KS? Uh, on the table with me, um, I've got the uh, the Smith & Wesson 2.0 Compact, uh, the Shield 2.0, and actually the Steyr as well. You guys have been talking a lot about Steyrs lately, and I uh, wanted to get that out. I'm going to take that shooting tomorrow. I haven't shot with it for a while. And that is such an awesome gun. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I've only dry fired the one that I have, and I'm um, really liking the trigger and, you know, trying to point and get used to those sights a little bit. And they're kind of growing on me, you know, but I haven't live fired it yet. I've got the uh, carrying the PO1, and I've got the PO9 also. So that's what I've got with me. Ooh. Yeah, I'm still waiting for my uh, my handgun, so I got nothing new to report. It's unbelievable. Although I do have something, I you know I I'm gonna see if I can pull this up. If you guys want to talk about something, go ahead. But I want to pull up the email that I actually got from the guy uh, who sort of I guess runs the civil administration in Ulster County, New York, about why why it's taken six weeks, if not longer, to get guns. So if you want to talk about something else, I'll pull that email up and I'll share with you his response. Uh, actually, you have a question, KS. Uh, do you use the same holster for your 19 and your P10C? Will they fit the same holster? No, nope, they can't. Um, or at least, uh, okay, so I have to say that a little bit carefully because I know there are some holsters that uh, do fit both the Glock and the P10, and, and it's a lot of times larger outside the waistband holsters, even if they're full Kydex. Um, I, I stick with a couple of brands uh, that I like quite a bit. Uh, one that I run with a lot is uh, Vetter Holsters, and I've had an old uh, Vetter inside the waistband, a light, tech, uh, light tuck for the 19, and of course I tested that. In fact, I think I put it on the very first P10 video I did. It did not fit, um, so actually Vetter just sent me a, uh, a holster for that. Um, so I'll be kind of sharing a couple of new uh, holster acquisitions here before too long. Fits like a glove, but they are absolutely not the same. And I think um, a lot of it's because the 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 P10 dimensions are just just ever so much bigger, almost all the way around than the Glock 19. Yeah, Kyle is asking to see these real quick. Uh, he wants to see these lock grips. I think he has a P10. These are like or a P P01. Uh, these will fit. These are the large palm swells, so they're just like your stock uh, P01 and your PCR, but they're actually super super aggressive, and I love these things. But anyway. So you can see those. All right, go ahead, 17. Did you find your goodies? Yeah, I, I don't know if, if I should read my whole email to this guy. It's, it's pretty damn long. <laughs> I don't know. Sum it up. Uh, basically, I went into this long-winded email explaining that judges who sit on the bench um, are there to interpret laws, but not to enforce or recreate them in their own vision. And so I went on this whole rant and used a lot of big words to make myself sound smart. And then... <laughs> Uh, a couple of days later, a couple of phone calls later, he finally responded, and this was his response to me. He says, the various lengths of time for the numerous licensing officers to sign coupons is more a function of how busy they are. I would not infer any intent on their part to infringe upon Second Amendment rights. That's a load of crap. I've spoken with some of them, and to be honest, they would prefer to return to the old system where we were at the Pistol Bureau, had delegated authority to process this merely ministerial task. However, Chief Judge Breslin, who's the guy, the big guy in New York, uh, has ordered them not to delegate to us based upon his interpretation of the law, which in my personal opinion is erroneous. And then he goes on to say, myself and the sheriff will continue to defend the Second Amendment. Well, you know, you can sit there and tell me all you want that it's up to the caseload of the judges. That's a load of garbage because there are some judges right now that are just signing them and off they go. And then based upon their own political affiliations or their you know personal beliefs about guns and who has them, some of them are sitting on them for you know five, six weeks. And that's exactly what's going on. So you know I'm not gonna fault him for it because I don't think it's his fault per se, but something should change. Something should change because there's no mandatory weight and yet uh, we're basically having a mandatory wait based on a judge's opinion. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I agree. I think it's crap. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I hope they start making some changes for you here pretty soon. You're, you know, getting on six weeks plus. That's that's yep. inexcusable. Yep, and that's the first batch. There's a second batch that will probably be even longer than that. <laughs> Jeez. Unbelievable. Yeah. 
that's that's asinine. Uh, I mean, you know, especially since you know one thing that really bugs me, and and they should really take this into account. You have your CHL, you know, you have a license to carry. You should be priority, and all the other guys that are just fuddling around and waiting, you know, maybe they get moved back, but. If you've got it, you should get it like the next damn day. Right, because just to get the license in New York, it takes almost a year to get your carry license. Yeah, that's and what I'm saying. It's up to the judge to determine if you're going to get a full carry or if they're just going to give you, and I say giving because they really shouldn't be giving you anything, um, but they either give you a full carry or they give you like a range permit or a hunting permit. So you can't even carry the gun on your person unless you're doing one of those two things. So you go through the background check, it takes almost a year to do it, and then you're still being pushed through this system that doesn't even make sense. You should give them the finger. Yeah. Yeah. I'll right. I'll do it after I get my uh, my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so um, 1776, uh, you've got a question on the floor here. Um, what is the rule on building an 80% from Harry's holsters? I, I would have no no friggin' clue. I've never thought about building anything. Um, I said once before that I had looked in getting into getting an AR that was about 400 bucks, and then with all the stupid crap that you have to do to it to make it compliant here in New York. It, it upcharged it like another $300. So for me personally, it's just my own personal thing. I know people say, oh, you, you're, you're anti-patriotic. I'm not going to get an AR-15. I'm not. I'm not going to do something to a gun that makes it, in my opinion, uh, mostly non-usable. Uh, I mean, there's no point. You can't have a re uh, removable magazine. Um, if you have a magazine that's attached, you have to pin it. Um, you can't have a uh, telescoping stock. I mean, it's just these stupid things that make no sense. Yeah. I know Bald and Curious has some videos. Uh, he's been doing some AR stuff. You know, if, yeah, they can probably check that out. Bald and Curious, if you don't want to look at that. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, Blazon also asked a question a little while ago about... Wait, can I just cut you off really quick? Because Bald yeah, yeah, yeah. gets me annoyed every once in a while with his comments. <laughs> so he's sitting there saying I need to quit bitching. Because you guys got up to the rest of the state, New York sucks, period. Well, that's a great attitude. Very proactive, Baldy, really. You know, that's precisely the problem. We've had this discussion before. That's the problem with New York State. Everybody just settles for what they tell you, you know, and, and that's it. That's why we can't get any support. That's why the people who are, who are going up um, to northern New York to talk to this judge who made his opinion law in, in the state uh, can't get anybody to support them because everybody's just complacent and complying. You know, you know, I'm not going to quit bitching and I'm not going to quit forcing the issue because if that's the case, then what's going to be next? Uh, a three month wait, six month wait. Um, you know, enough is enough. We've given up enough. Yeah. Sorry. Just want to say that. No, that's fair. No problem. Uh, so Blazin had asked a little while ago about upcoming guns at SHOT Show. Do you guys uh, have any whispers? And this is for anybody, of course, uh, in the crowd. Has anybody heard any whispers about anything? I, I mean, I haven't, you know, seen other than the Arsenal and the Hudson and stuff like that, that we kind of got a sneak peek. And, you know, CZ also, and they re released it last year at Chacho or went over it. It's the, uh, you know, it's the CZ, uh, the bull shadow, and it's got a bull barrel in it. And they were like, oh, it's going to be out. And I haven't heard crap about it. So I don't know if they're going to release it or if it hadn't been released, but it was one that CZ Custom was actually building the frame for. I mean, they were kind of doing the whole gun. And I was kind of excited about seeing what the MSRP was and all that stuff, but I don't know if it's going to be released this year or what. I don't know. Okay, 17? Uh, the only thing I've heard is, is from somebody from Walther, and it was kind of a, an indirect thing, and I mentioned it before, that there is uh, potential that we're going to see a, a, a smaller version of the PPQ. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know if they're going to redesign it completely or if they're just going to shrink it down. I, me personally, if they would just make that PPQ the size of the CCP, that'd be awesome. You know, the CCP, I have no desire to own, but if they can make that PPQ that size, that would be sweet. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the, the, the CZP 10 C, uh, subcompact, uh, and, or the, the L or the long, I think those, uh, there've been some whispers about that. It'd be really cool if Glock brought over the 46, uh, which is the, uh, the rotating barrel one that's very similar to like grand powers, that sort of thing. Bald, I think you'd love that. Um, I, although I don't know that they're going to import that, um, I haven't heard a thing, but that would be pretty sweet. 
Um, beyond that, I, you know, I really don't know. I imagine Smith and Wesson will keep trying to ride the, uh, uh, the 2.0 roller coaster, so to speak, or train, I guess. And I would imagine that they would come out, uh, with probably a, a 9C 2.0. I mean, the 9C was a pretty popular firearm. Yeah. Um, so there'd be no reason to, uh, not bring that out beyond that. I don't really have any guesses at this point in time. I bet at SHOT Show they'll also have the um, Compact and the 9C uh, and FDE also probably showing that those colors are going to be coming. Right. So. No, I, was looking, I was looking through the comments. Somebody asked me like what I'm waiting for. Um, it's, Everything. A lot, it's a lot of stuff. Um, it's, uh, gosh, you got to think about. Uh, well, right now the first batch should be the, uh, the Steyr L9. Can't wait for that gun, man. And uh, the MNP 2.0, but the full size, not the um, well, it's not the full five and a quarter inch; it's four and a quarter inch barrel. Um, so not the compact. And then on the second bu bunch, it's um, <laughs> I got to think it's been so long, man. I can't even remember. Starts with um, an H and a K. Oh yeah, VP9 um, again. <laughs> the uh, SP01 Phantom. I'm so excited for that gun, and. Um, there's one more I can't remember. Oh, I I, I used Glock 17, and uh, and of course the Strike B whenever that comes out. Yeah. Damn! Look at Blazing. He hit you with five bucks. Blazing more beers all around for everybody. Uh, thank you very much for that. That's uh, freaking awesome, guy. You guys. Um, I uh, yeah. I'm retiring tomorrow, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, remember, very cool. it's, uh, it's fifty fifty. So five bucks a piece, then, pal. It's it's fifty fifty fifty. Um, right. Um, so uh, Nolan was also saying, or I, I guess I should. Are we going by Nolan still? Or are we going by Lock and Load Lifestyle? I'm calling you Nolan. That's all there is to it. Um, but uh, he was saying FDE would be awesome. I totally agree. Although I would be super pissed if they came out with the FDE that soon <laughs> because I've got them both. I'm not. I'm not buying anymore. I can't. I can't follow those sorts of things. So I'll, I'll stick with my all black guns and be happy with it at this point. Devon asked if you can get a uh, uh, AR in New York, like they have in California. You can do that. Um, they have like those Aries um, rifles, um, but I, I always say I'd rather get a really good like uh, an SKS or something like that, um, just because I, I like the caliber better. But that's my opinion. Yeah, Farm Freak has a question. Anybody seen <clears throat> the Trailblazer light card in the 22 LR? Oh, no, I haven't. Up and, yeah, it's like a little credit card looking thing, and it's oh, a yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I would be completely out on that thing. Uh, would, would you? Would you? Would you use it? You think you would fire something like that? You know, I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't even put. I couldn't even put my big ass paws on it. More or less, try to get it out of my pocket. I mean, I've I saw a few of them, and I'm just know, like Plankster. Twenty two Plankster had one, and he, he's got you know he's six four and he's got big old long hands, and he was sitting there and he was playing with a tinker toy. I'm like, hell yeah. with that. But, you know, it's it's about having it loaded and ready to go, but it looked too yeah. jinky to me to mess with. Um, I, I, I'm actually uh, – I think it's actually a great concept. Um, I love the idea of a an extreme backup firearm of some sort or another. However, that one looks a little bit flimsy in my opinion, although I've never actually seen one. I could be totally wrong on that. But, but the idea behind it I think is fantastic. Uh, just a, a, a last ditch, uh, something that's extremely concealable uh, that that would still work. Captain Phil said he'd shoot himself in the butt with it. Yeah, right. Probably what I would do. Hey, um, I gotta I gotta ask Sean something here real quick. Um, he was saying that the Apex, um, and I'm not sure what kit it is. Um, he, he said D C A E K. I'm not sure what that means. First 2.0 compact is awesome, Sean. I would be interested uh, to hear a little bit more about that. If that's the uh, if that's a polymer trigger or if that's the aluminum trigger, because I, I I don't think I think they're coming out with like a flat trigger and a couple of other things because the uh, uh, the tr trigger components in the 2.0, from what I understand, are a little bit different. So I'm, I'm I'm you've got me curious about that. Yeah, I don't know. As soon as I get that 2.0, I'm going to shoot it, but I'll probably wind up dropping the trigger. Uh, it's just I hate that. Uh, yeah. That's one of one my opinion. One of the worst triggers on the market. Well, a lot of people, yeah, they just don't like the hinge, you know. But I'm so used to it. Damn! Look, forty-one fifty. Look at that. Wow, that's a shot. Rich, Shit. Rich, you're a cheap bastard. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, Rich, he, he said he's he's giving it to you for some stamps. Yeah, yeah. Mail to your lot. 
they're they're not even going to look at him, man. It's it's just we you know what it is. We just it's a just an uphill climb in New York, man. It's sad. It's it's a shame, but I I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying, man. I don't care. Uh, you know, I'm going to keep trying. I think yeah, I, I think you should, and I will send that two dollars directly to you to keep trying. No oh, thanks, buddy. There you go. <laughs> keep it keep it for your drug habit. <laughs> I, I don't have a drug habit. <laughs> yeah, not the bathtub tonight. meth. What do you do with all that bathtub meth I send you? Oh God, seriously, what is it with you and the bathtub meth? What is wrong here's, with you? Here's bald and curious piping in again. Buy a freaking gun that doesn't need a trigger upgrade, like a Grand Power. <laughs> he's the new spokesman for Grand Power. You didn't know. Well, I know. But hey, here's here's where he's going with this. Okay, on my video, which I guess 1776 hasn't even watched about this tire. You know, I say, you know, I, I actually, hey, jackass, I commend you like about 19 times in the video. I, I did watch your video. I just, I don't, did I anyway, listen. So then Bald and Curious puts a comment on there that says, Grand Power, Grand Power, Grand Power. Like, yeah, I saw that comment. I saw that. He's, he's a Grand Power fanboy. Good for him. I'm glad he liked a particular handgun. I know. And I, I've told him I'm not opposed to getting one. I'm, you know, hell, I might get one. Hey, that that Excalibur is freaking sweet looking. Well, that, uh, now, I, one, that, would be, that would be the one I would get. Bald, Bald was nice enough to send me the P11 uh, to do some testing with, and and I have to say, it was actually a lot of fun to shoot. It's a it is a sweet little shooter. It was a pain in the ass to take apart, and that may be sort of a, 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 a stop for me a little bit because um, I really enjoy the 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 maintenance and and tinkering with aspect of things. But, uh, but it was a sweet gun. But as far as trigger goes, I don't know, Bald. I, I, I like taking apart guns um, and switching out parts and trying different things. I mean, it's why I'm, I'm, I, I enjoy Glock so much. I think that's just part of the pleasure of it, frankly. Well, don't you have to with a Glock? Uh, you don't have to, but uh, it's probably a good idea if you want a better trigger, better sights, that sort of thing. But no, you take a Glock out of a box and run with it. You really could. So I got a question for both of you guys and for the people out there watching this. Um, is there a specific gun, manufacturer, platform, whatever, uh, handgun, I'll go with handgun, that you have never had but would love to have one? And the Hudson, you cannot say because we already know KS that you, you want damn a damn Hudson. So that's off the table. But is there anything in particular right now that's available that you look at and you say, boy, I'd really like to own one of those but you just haven't pulled the trigger on. Big Johnson? Mm. <laughs> he owns so many, he can't, he can't yeah. say. <laughs> I, ha I have a lot, and uh, I have had a lot. Uh, personally, I've never owned an STI, um, and I really like them, but the 2011s just won't work with my hand, but I've never owned an STI, you know, even a single stack. Um, you know, and I like some of their guns. I probably need a little more time on this one. Hmm. What about you, Kev? I, I, a, a, uh, I've got kind of a short wish list, so to speak. Um, and I, actually, I think the CZ Shadow 2 uh, might be uh, on top for me. I, I've shot Big Johnson's, uh, and that is an exquisite firearm. It's it's just a phenomenal firearm. So, um, well, it's not on top of the list. Um, I've got some other things before it. At some point in time, I will get a shadow too. Hmm. Good, good choices. Hmm. Um, I don't really know, man. I, I would have to think about it. Uh, you know, uh, actually, you know what? I, I would like to get. Um, I don't really know. I'm not gonna lie. I don't really know. I can't think. Uh, I did. I did dry fire an STI a couple times, and that gun is just friggin' ridiculous. Um, so if I could buy one, I would probably pick one of those up. If I'm going to get like a 1911 style pistol, you know, after just feeling that trigger on on the STI, it, it's it is ridiculous that trigger. You know, you just look at it and the hammer drops. It's awesome. Yeah. No, I guess okay. And I've joked around about this before, but I would love to have an Atlas uh, 2011. You know, but of course that's probably. Crazy price. I mean, I know it's crazy price. It's like uh, six or eight grand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people are saying like Wilson Combat, Dan Wesson. Uh, the two highest end pistols I've ever owned uh, was a Dan Wesson and a Les Bear. Um, and, you know, it, they brought up a good point here. Like the, um, 
Chris Vector. I, I think Chris Vector would be awesome to have. Uh, you know, like in a nine millimeter, ten millimeter, something like that. That'd be a fun ass pistol, or yeah. you know, caliber carbine, whatever you want to call it. But I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, real quickly, and this kind of goes along with this conversation, sort of. Dave Ports, and this was uh, just a little while ago, asked a question, and this uh, this is a fascinating question and also a very difficult question. And this is also for everybody out there. Uh, he asks, uh, and I got to get back to that again. Uh, what's the best gun out of the box? And I know that kind of leaves a lot of that leaves yeah. a lot of options there. But if you if you had to open up the box, pick up the gun, and start shooting with it and run with it. What do you think? What would it be? Any gun that I own? I, you know what? Any gun. I, I, I mean, I think we, we should probably just open this wide. Probably if you're going any gun straight out of the box. Um, honestly, and it's not because I'm a fanboy, but the Shadow 2. I mean, for the bang, for the buck, for that gun, or even the PO9. If you wanted to get a polymer version and it's less expensive, the PO9 out of the box is an incredible pistol, um, but I would say if you're going all metal gun, Shadow 2, and it, you know it's double action, single action. I mean, and you can do so much with it. You can shoot competition with it. You can plink with it. You can do whatever you want to with it. And hell, I'm even, you know, I'm actually uh, going to do this. I've got a different type holster, but I'm going to carry it. Uh, it will be an outside waistband, and I'll have a jacket over it when it gets colder. But I'm going to carry the damn thing. Hell with it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, I mean, if, if, can I do striker and hammer or no? Anything do whatever you want. Um, if I was going to do a hammer fired gun, it, it's a close one because, uh, I, I mean, the PO one to me is still the boss of all CZs. I know that may hurt some people's feelings, but to me, the P zero one is just the shit. Um, you know, if I was going to go polymer hammer, I'd go with a P zero seven because I just think that's also a fine handgun. Um, striker fired, you know, if you would have asked me this, you know, six, seven months ago, I would have definitely said the PPQ out of the box is the best. Um, but I, I am telling you now just out of personal use thousand rounds, you know, just having so much fun with the gun, the Steyr M nine is probably the gun that I would pick over every other gun striker fired wise. Nice. Nice. Um, so people have, have started uh, making their claims and I'll tell you what, it's an incredibly wide array of firearms. I mean, farm is saying, Sig now there's a lot of options within Sig, but uh, but a great brand nonetheless. Sean Sig P10, uh, Sig P320 from Captain Filmy. It, it kind of goes on and on. Wicked saying the uh, G19 Kyle PO1. So there you go. There's another vote for the PO1. Uh, Phil is saying PPQ. I'm, I know I'm not going to hit everybody on this because you guys are uh, bringing up a lot of different guns here. Uh, Nolan is saying uh, P01 for Hammer Fired, Striker for Glock 19. So a lot of different options. For me, if it was just simply one gun, uh, best out of the box, and, and you know, best is tough to quantify, um, and, uh, and I don't think there's such a thing as best, and so the gun that I would pick out of the box to just run with would not necessarily be the best, necessarily, but I would say the Glock 19, because I know I could pick up a Glock 19 out of a box, I could just go shoot, um, there there would be no problem there, uh, but, uh, but it, it definitely needs some upgrades, so it's not the best gun at all. Uh, but that's how I'd run with Knuckles saying the VP9. Knuckles, that's another awesome one, one of my very favorite ones for sure. Uh, so, guys, we're getting close to the end of the evening, uh, almost uh, 8 o'clock Central here. Um, so we probably ought to start wrapping things up. A couple of things real quickly. Guys, don't forget, uh, when you can, please be sure to check out Abaddon Apparel. It's been a while since we've said that. that is it, it is still out there. Uh, go wander around. There's a lot of really cool stuff out there, not just clothing and everything, although the clothing there is awesome, of course. Uh, but uh, some cool blogs and other stuff like that. So just wander around if you get a chance. Um, and, uh, and then the other thing, you guys, thank you all for joining us. Um, you know, we've had 75, uh, pretty close to 80 people on. So that's Very awesome. Good. Thank you for the incredible, uh, donations to the channel that will be, uh, put to good use and spread around to other channels and all that kind of good stuff and expect a small thing of beer at each of your, uh, addresses here uh, very shortly. So thank you guys all very much. We love this. Go ahead, 17. Uh, yeah, just uh, to reiterate what KS said, man. Thanks, guys, for you know coming out and you know just supporting all three of our channels on this live chat. We enjoy doing it. It's probably more fun than making videos, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. 
you know, the donations are awesome. You know, I would never ask you to donate. And if you don't want to, you don't have to, you know, that's, that's not a part of the deal for us. Um, but you know, again, we appreciate it. Um, you know, just in the future, I got a couple of things I'm going to be working on soon. I've got a holster from Harry, so it's pretty dope. I actually like this holster quite a bit. Now it just needs this damn gun. And then um, I'll also be doing one of these here. This is a, a black arch. Uh, I actually paid for this. I bought it because it just looks so awesome. And um, it's for, I can't remember. Oh, it's, this is for VP9 <laughs> that I don't have yet. But I actually carried it with, uh, sure enough, I mean, crazy enough, the... Uh, the PO one fits in it like like a damn glove. I see. So I, I carried it with this, and it's it's freaking awesome. So I'm cool. looking forward to doing Harry's holster and seeing what that's all about. But uh, definitely check him out, dude, because it's uh, it's got a lot of cool features to it. Um, I also got something coming in from Chote. Chote sending out a stock uh, for the SKS, which is pretty dope. Um, so I'm gonna switch the stock around and and hopefully go out and shoot that in a couple of weeks. Um, but I'm trying to do a little bit more custom stuff to the SKS for myself personally. Um, but other than that, same old, same old. Once I get the guns, you guys will see them. And uh, again, thanks for you know hanging out with us. Yeah, I've got some uh, stuff coming up next week where I'll be shooting ARs, shotguns, and pistols. And I'm going to be hauling a bunch of pistols with me. And I'm really excited about shooting my Steyr, not just KS's, but my personal Steyr. I want to get a lot of ammo through that thing and a lot of trigger time behind it and give an honest opinion of it. You know, it's now since I own it. Um, Got some other stuff. Um, got a lot of videos that have been stored up, and I'll be putting those out. I also have a test coming up on the lock grips because I do love them, and it's the large palm swell versus the bogies and the regular. And this is, in my opinion, for me. So got that coming out probably tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I appreciate all you guys and and ladies being on. If there's any ladies, and uh, gosh, that's awesome to get the donation on the chat. I mean. That's incredible. You guys make it all happen. And this is a hell of a lot of fun. We get to interact with all of our subscribers and, you know, get to be with these clowns. It's just a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. And, uh, and we appreciate it. So just keep watching. Stay tuned. Uh, again, don't all, also don't forget to start looking elsewhere for our content soon. I don't know about the other two guys, but I'm on VidMe. So you guys can check that out as well. I don't care if you don't watch the videos there. They're basically the same ones as here. So, you know, yeah. if you don't mind, just check it out. Thank you all very much. We appreciate you. Carry on, everyone. All right, guys. Thanks a bunch. Have a great week. See you, you guys. Too. Thanks.